I made a mistake. And it's quite painful every time I think about it. Hey, Dachi here. Welcome back to my tech founder journey. Today is gonna be a busy day, a lot of things to do. And I wanna show you some stats, where I am right now. And there are some major, major mistakes I need to reverse. So I wanna get the day going with a little workout today. Let's get right in. I'm gonna do a little bit of pull actions today. So I'm gonna do some pull-ups and some bar movements and uh, I'm gonna finish it up with a quick hit workout just to get my heart racing a little bit. Cheers! Just made some coffee, took a shower, feeling really good. It's time for a no BS startup update. For about two months, I was having a hard time finding users. I was doing a lot of co outreach, but the growth was very slow. I was kind of thinking, maybe I don't have a product market fit, but it wasn't true. At least it was too early to draw conclusions. I talked about it in my other video. I found out that there were just not a lot of people visiting the website. Organic traffic from SEO takes time to build up and I did almost no marketing. As a result, not a lot of users signing up. Just about two weeks ago, I decided to run Google Ads. I researched a few keywords and make sure the ads only runs in the key market I want to be in. One thing I would say about keywords, I make sure that the coverage is big enough. So it's not just about YouTube, thumbnail, title, A-B testing. It's also about why people want to search for such things. So I included a few problems that creators might have on YouTube. It's been two weeks and the strategy definitely paid off. In just less than 14 days, my new setups increased five times more. And that tells me there's definitely a need for it. The website now have about 2,000 page views for the past 13, 14 days, which is a lot better than what it used to have. And considering the fact that I run these ads with very, very tight budget, I think it pays off quite well. Google Ads is definitely one of the growth hacks in my toolbox. I would definitely recommend. Now that I got some tractions, the next step would be finding out how to convert signups into pay customers. I will experiment different ways to check out, different pricing, different discount and free trials. I was just checking the A-B test I ran the past couple of days and I found something interesting. I've been running a few tests on my previous video and this is what happened. You see at the beginning, the view was growing pretty linearly and then it stopped growing quite a bit. That's where I start running A-B tests on thumbnails. And because I was able to change it to a better thumbnail, the plateau ended and then it started growing again and again. I think this is a very cool, very humbling feeling that uh, I'm my own user. And the good thing about being my own user is that I can communicate better with people about Una. It helps me understand the use cases and all these first-hand experiences help me relate to creator's use case a little bit better. So when people say, build something that solves your own problems, This is probably the biggest mistake I made so far. And it's quite painful every time I think about it. So this is how the story goes. A YouTuber replied my cold email. He was like, hey, I love your product. You actually reached out at the perfect timing. I'm thinking about moving away from TubeBuddy. So I would love to try Una. And this was, of course, a awesome news. So if you don't know, TubeBuddy is one of the biggest 
platform in the YouTuber space. They offer a lot of analytic tools, A-B testing being one of them. So it was really great to hear that very accomplished creator on YouTube wanted to switch to Una. And then he went on saying he will only give it a try if he can get at least six months of free trial and all his team members need to be able to use it for free. I was so excited about the whole thing. Having a team plan was also part of the pricing that I have in mind. At that time, the team plan didn't exist. So this entire feature needs to be developed. I got back to him saying that, hey, let's do it. I will need about a week and I'll let him know when it's ready and he can sign up and onboard his team. Little did I know, it was such a pain to implement this. The whole system at that time was made specifically for individual creators. So to implement a team plan that can coexist with individual plans, it just made the whole system become very cumbersome and inflexible. Not just that, I wanted to make the onboarding process very easy for him. So I also implemented the referral feature where he can sign up with a, with a special link and it sets up everything he needs, how many uh, team members does he need and how long would the free trial be, things like this. So he added even more code to it. And after a week, I got back to him saying, hey, we're ready. Weeks and weeks passed. I never heard from him. He never signed up. I got ghosted. At the end, there's just this big chunk of code and database schema change sitting there. But all in all, I think it's a great lesson. The mistake here was I started implementing a feature without a commitment. I basically took a request from a potential customer. The better way would be getting him to commit first, saying, hey, if you want six months for free, you got it. Here's the total after discount for six months. Once you subscribe, you can start using Wuna and I'll make sure you can onboard your team in a week. This way, he's a committed paying customer and I'm reacting to his feature request. And also the sale will happen faster instead of giving him a week to think about it and, and eventually he dropped out. It was just a bump in the road and I learned a valuable lesson. No biggie. And now I'm gonna undo the feature. So what I'm gonna do now is to revert the change. It's gonna take a little bit of my time, but I think it's a good investment. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. See you next time. Ciao.